this is the this is the uh, big question that I think we are missing at the moment in active in France. Awesome. Well, thank you for this presentation. Thanks for the social sciences work, and we're all looking forward to seeing how the projects play out. Thank you. Goodbye. Farewell, Abel. All right. The next presentation is with Pablo Fernandez Maquiera. So welcome back, Pablo. Hello. <laughs> Look here. Okay. I did. <laughs> Take us on an adventure of curiosity. Yes. I'm going to start sharing my screen. Let me know if everything is all right. Uh, should be perfect. Yep. Cool. So this is one of my favorite memes and, um, and probably most of you know it, uh, this reference, uh, is um, um, the cave uh, of Platon. And uh, to me, it was kind of intuitive uh, truth that uh, now with active inference, it seems like we are closer to demonstrate that that's how it is. So um, the first time that I start uh, act uh, in and surf yeah, at the institute uh i just uh this was my kind of my feeling or my face uh it was uh, looking into something that it was complex scary and look interesting so i went and why i decided to to go through it. Um, uh, I envision a world where people is driving by strong incentives that motivate them to reduce uncertainty uh, in the systems they are part of. And, uh, my approach is through games, which are going to go later. But I really, on this talk, want to encourage uh, all kinds of persons or people that are curious and I want them to um, act and get involved in the community because you may find that uh, uh, for now um, most of the uh, actors are uh, scientists and very well and reputed people and you might think that you are not uh, a part of, of it but uh, very far away from that, uh, the Institute encouraged uh, the opposite. So I'm super glad to have been through this journey. And I wanted to share a little bit of my background and then we go to the game. Um, here is the second and last meme. Uh, the world you were raised uh, to survive is no longer exist. We are on a digital revolution. And with this digital revolution, uh, it comes a bunch of different um, things that are evolving and hopefully uh, bring us to a better world. Um, OK, who I am? I'm Pablo. My name is Pablo, but uh, I'm, uh, more defined or well, much, my, what best define me is my action and my experiences. Um, um, I think uh, role game plays and sports and movies are super important. And as a kid, I was uh, uh, dyslexic and the system didn't fill my necessities. So I really hated school, but I love learning. And it's something that I've been doing all my life. And it's curious how uh, a system that is designed to uh, give you knowledge and to uh, uh, help you with the learning. In my case, it didn't work at all. <laughs> and and just uh, that's a little uh, 
starting point. Uh, I believe in in the copy transformation and combine of things. And on my uh, uh, adulthood, uh, everything uh, shifted, and I became a successful uh, professional. And I love um, IT teams. Um, 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 what I do for a living is uh, a product manager. And what I do on my pet projects, side projects, call it as you want, uh, is related to uh, gaming and gamifying um, uh, organizations and experiences. Um, uh, nowadays, I trust more my intuition, which is something that uh, it really was broken during my childhood. And you will see a little bit more about that. Here are some things of my interest, uh, licenses, uh, like open science, which is the case of the Institute, philosophy, and that's the first meme, education, governance, family, art. Um, love, communication, technology, and nature, and a bunch of other things that I will be happy to share any other time. And one of the questions that Daniel asked me for this talk is, it was, what was exciting for me uh, about all this, what, right? And for me, I always, when, when I, I give talks, I, I like to share a view of the last hundred years, and, and and the industrial revolution and how uh, the the ones that were on this world uh, before us did something right. Uh, I'm sure that we all know uh, big uh, mistakes or big things that have uh, failed or that could be uh, better through iterations. But on data, it's it's very. Uh, promising and, and very good, uh, I, I think is um, inspiring to have uh, this, the basic education, how it grows, uh, the vaccination, what it did, did for us, uh, democracy uh, and how uh, poverty drop dr drastically, how literacy uh, it, it grew, and because all these uh, things, uh, child mortality uh, just went very low. Uh, so basically, the future of education is what makes me be excited. And um, how I ended on this ecosystem, uh, it's super uh, random. And I'm going to explain it in hopefully two to five minutes. I, um, as a product manager, I'm very interested on technology. I heard about blockchains back in 2015, and I didn't understand anything at all. And then back in 2017, I heard about ICOs. I did not understand them. I did not play that game. But uh, it was uh, uh, raising a fun thing to consider, which is digital assets and ownership of those digital assets. Uh, uh, for now, we we, do, we didn't have uh, a technology that could scale and that was uh, good enough to ensure that the digital assets that you own uh, were you, yours, and you had the freedom of transaction uh, on them. I, I did understand that very fast. And because I'm a game player, and as a game player, you always have your different uh, assets and and do things with them. And as well, I I, I have been uh, collecting music uh, and all kind of uh, uh, digital um, assets. Uh, I bought uh, this very famous collection of uh, punks and sold them very fast before uh, I could be a millionaire. <laughs> but uh, during 2021, I decided that I wanted to build something. And then, uh, back then, I went through this uh, beautiful project that was the first art show on Ethereum, 
which one of the artists it was Daniel uh, Friedman. So I, as a curious person and a person that has been working with artists, I always like to know what is the driver of those artists, uh, what they do, and, and try to get in their worlds to understand better and to get as much information as, as I can uh, before I decide to uh, encourage or collect or 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 just deep deep always uh, deeper on on music or art for me is a um, very nice nice thing to do. So I discover uh, these cards and education. Um, was one of them and I went through uh, Flickr which is where it was the first at least what I, that I found a uh, place where it was and the license it was a creative commons license uh, of not commercial use but uh, it, it was an open license which I been uh, a part of uh, Creative Commons community for a really very, very long time since uh, I was uh, uh, working with musicians and I think it's one of the best things that happened to the internet. Um, this is These are some of the pragmatic uh, uh, things that uh, the audience cares, cares about. Hopefully we will have some of these on our games. Uh, AI for sure is going to be there. Um, free energy principle is going to be one of the things that hopefully we help to minimize and to make it funnier games or happier games or and games that help organizations to be better. Uh, the human factor. Uh, it's super important for me and implementation and action uh, I learned by doing and it's one of the values that uh, the Institute encouraged more so uh, I just jump on things and try to understand them through doing and sharing as I'm doing now. Uh, here are the epistemics and um, Collective uh, is one of them that I'm um, as well uh, super interested. Um, agents, <laughs> of course, uh, practical and curiosity, which is the adventure that um, uh, I have the feeling that I'm being involved all my my life and that I encourage always my my two girls to to be curious and to. Uh, open things and look behind the doors and just be an active. Here are some values that I like to point, which are exploration, uh, the culture of curiosity that I did mention a lot, um, uh, continuous learning, uh, because that experience on the school, I think I, <laughs> I just keep going and keep going. And it's something that sometimes um, uh, bad experiences could turn out in good habits. Uh, learning by doing, as I already told, um, integrity and inclusivity, honesty, account accountability, a big one, um, trying to be professional on everything that you do. Um, for me, I started as a human being curious. <laughs> um, People of all backgrounds and perspectives are welcome to the, to the Institute. Um, I could, I would be very happy to be the link and to speak with uh, uh, someone that has doubts or if I can help, I think I could help on the very early stage. And, and if you're not a very technical person, I think I could help there and, and yeah, and as I, we are learning by doing, I would love to everyone uh, that's uh, that's on the stream. Uh, I'm gonna share this link, which is uh, a new a new game that we are testing, and I'm excited to to share it with with you. Uh, it's the adventure of curiosity, and here, Daniel, I'm gonna copy and paste the link 
Uh, it would be awesome. Okay, there's a tiny it. typo on your slides. It just ends with a curiosity. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. But I'm gonna I'm gonna paste I'm gonna paste it into the YouTube live chat. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, I told you I'm, I'm a dyslexic. I have all kind of typos <laughs> around my life. Sorry for for that. I always try to improve it. Uh, let's. Um, Hmm. Okay, so you shared. Uh, yeah, I put it in the YouTube chat so people can head over there. All right, yeah, could you tell us about this platform? And this is the first active game. <laughs> yes. Um, we uh, started thinking on how to do a game a while ago, uh, and we decided to go with this um, uh, picture that explains how it works. Actually, it's simple and you have uh, four pieces, the internal state, external state, and in the middle, you have the sensory state and the active state. So <laughs> here is the mission. You have uh, some instructions that uh, you can read and would be fun if you go through them and you can go either way and here we are going to go to the uh, sensory state where you're going to listen to a music where some notes you can censor that are not in the famous song of for Elise so you have to take notes and you can go and you can see that we are on the mark of blanket which so, so everything very dalinian as dali would paint it <laughs> and here is your active uh part of the game where you have to do something which is Uh, add the different notes that your uh, professor, music uh, professor, is telling you you don't miss because you probably on the uh, external uh, state are trying to play the music. So you have to infer that you are missing some notes and go to the active state and start uh, walking through the right note. Uh, if I miss the note, I just follow, <laughs> fall into the nothing and come back it, into my internal state. So uh, probably would have to go back and censor again. And once I take the right actions and the right notes, I can go and solve the puzzle. And the idea here is to have a tool, a gaming tool to um, explain or so you can uh, experience how this uh, active inference on free energy works and once you go to the end of that uh, adventure which i'm not gonna finish because it's something that uh, players should do you're gonna have a door where you have to put the se sequence in low case of uh of what were the missing notes, and it's going to allow you to come inside the treasure room where you will have a feedback, uh, uh, feedback that you can send us, and we will be very happy to have it. And then uh, if you have a wallet, you will be able to have a 
digital asset. If not, we will add information to help uh, people to go from Web 2 to Web 3 and to get those digital assets. And here, to be developed, would be future adventures that I would be very happy to do. <laughs> so this was pretty much the presentation. And hopefully, we have play new players in the coming days. <laughs> Hope you have fun, and I really, really encourage anyone to discover and play with all these ideas and thoughts and experiments and things that I have the gut feeling that are going to revolutionize how we understand uh, the world and how we can improve in it by reducing uncertainty. So thank you. And I don't know, Daniel, if you have any comments or something in this last 10 minutes. <laughs> oh yeah, well, we can definitely talk for a few minutes. I'm, I'm seeing many fun comments and questions in the chat so people can, can post it. Yeah, the gameplay is smoother on even a normal computer it just like it may look choppy on the live stream but it's quite a nice um playing experience like maybe just a little context like how did you get into building these worlds or what kind of tools are these and we obviously don't see them in today's mainstream educational and research offerings but like what could that even be to bring together this kind of immersion and role playing with education research. Yes, um, I as uh, um, we I I I've been playing role games and role games. Uh, you have a very uh, diverse kind of players. So I I was playing with uh, guys like me, like uh, have. Uh, um, had a struggle through the uh, school and guys that uh, end up being uh, researchers like yourself because they were very good and, and in those environments. And, and, and for me, it, it was like, we are sharing a lot of cognitive uh, um, um, values and information, and they are really having fun with me. So, uh, that, that what what the academia is telling me is not is is not what I'm 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 feeling in in the real in in outside of academia. So that that through the years, uh, it became more and more clear that was one of uh, the drivers to have a very diverse kind of friends and 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 that one of the most important things for me to learn it was having fun and to be a good professional i have to be enjoying what i'm doing and to enjoy what i do it has to have that gamify feeling of it and so in 2021, uh, I, I just went to straight to explore that road uh, because uh, blockchains, what, what can do is uh, have a persistent sea of, of objects and attribute, attributions to the, those objects and to those wallets that you can add and build on top of them. It's, it's like having a huge uh, database for a game purpose and and then you figure out that a game is a kind of our organization so you need rules you need to serve values you need to uh have like uh what we are building now which is the uh, session sido which you agree with the players what's going to be about and how it's going to work and and we are uh, uh building this um, fantastic uh, storytelling 
of uh, how a uh, kind of world where it was in the uh, early tw uh, 20s compared to what's happening now in this uh, imaginary world that's complementary to what's happening in real life. And we are just exploring those areas for three years. And once I got into the into the institute, uh, we started sharing these ideas. You uh, send us to do a um, system thinking course that it was super uh, cool. Which, uh, we, we explore and learn and this uh, document that I can share, it was very uh, important for us to understand and we uh, find, find out the necessity to be able to computize what we are doing. So we start focusing more on ontology, on 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 all the the brick bricks that you need to to understand uh, to build um, the skeleton of uh, something that could last for decades, which is uh, uh, the idea, and we are trying to build it so everyone can copy, paste, fork it, and do whatever they want with the game, adapt it to their own organizations, and use it uh, on their favor. And, and we are just exploring and having fun. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. And there's so many, um, there's so many pieces there. It's true about the fun and the curiosity, those intrinsic motivations, like, being six hours deep into counting ants in the desert or 5,000 pipette pushes deep or whatever it is in the trenches and in the last mile. And um, it, it can be easy to lose sight, but when we lose sight and when we put out the fire and the spark, it's a cold, dark night. And no career or status or extrinsic valuation is gonna provide like simply the joy and the the deeper meaning of like two people going on a little adventure running around this space being inside active inference rather than active inference being like this high speed train that's leaving anyone behind or you're on the outside and it's taking these twists and turns and you're you're getting thrown off it's like it is cool and air conditioned in this space and people play and watch a lot of games where they wield violent arms and not even like saying whether that's good or bad. It just, it is a genre to want to have a camera either in a character's head, first person perspective, or a camera in a second or a third person perspective which you can switch between here and like those kinds of topics about like egocentric versus allocentric navigation and our ability to have a, a perspective swap on ourself and be able to take that kind of like out of body um situational awareness in real spatial settings and just to be able to cruise through this space and it's like, yeah, there, there's no, there's no right way to boomerang from extra. You can go from external to sensory. You can go here or there. It's, it's a, um, it's an appetizer and a, a fertilization that like we've really just never seen. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Daniel, well, for this. <laughs> Any last thoughts or comments? No, just enjoy while we are here, which is, <laughs> I think, our mission. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Pablo. I'm sure everyone's going to really enjoy this. And let's also, of course, continue to um, develop these games and continue to offer these on ramps and have times where we're meeting up in these spaces and playing around. Thank you. All right. Cheers. Bye. Farewell. All right. All right.
Welcome, Mal. This will be the final of the uh, presentation 